Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, my name's Steve here with Fitness HQ uh, and today we're going to be looking at a level 2 energy systems. Uh, like with the other units so far, this is also going to link in with the uh, level 3 sports massage course as well. Uh, so again, really good for a little bit of revision for you here. Uh, starting off again with the aims and objectives, uh, by all means stop and have a look through what we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to move straightly, uh, uh, swiftly onto um, the energy itself. Uh, now in your body we, we all realise that we, we've got to eat food uh, and we've got different nutrients and when the body absorbs them they're broken down and utilised. Uh, and they're converted into this word here, adenosine triphosphate, or abbreviated to ATP. Uh, that essentially is our unit of uh, energy uh, in the body. Uh, and the body uses this um, to fuel our muscles, to help us do everyday activities, gym, exercises, whatever it might be. Uh, essentially, it's one adenosine molecule with three phosphate molecules attached to it. Um, and the way we get energy is... Uh, so I'll explain in the next slide here. Uh, what happens is uh, you've got these strong bonds that connect the phosphate molecules to the adenosine. Um, now, what happens is that uh, ATP will release one of these phosphate molecules. That release there will create a nice explosion of energy, roughly about 7.3 calories worth of energy. Um, now, what the energy systems do is they replenish the, the now broken ATP uh, and there's three energy systems that we're going to look at. We're going to look at the creatine phosphate system, we're going to look at the lactate system and we're going to look at the aerobic system. Now we're going to start with the fastest one first so we're going to kick in with the creatine phosphate system. Now basically all it is, it's a creatine molecule that's attached to a phosphate molecule. So as the ATP gets rid of its phosphate molecule the creatine phosphate is sent along and basically the creatine disposes of its phosphate to then regenerate that ATP. Um, now each time the ATP is regenerated it can then release another phosphate molecule and give us more energy. So for each creatine phosphate molecule it will replenish one ATP within the body. Uh, now with the creatine phosphate system it's very very rapid. So we have, we have stores of these ready, available. We have ATP readily available. Uh, and it can give us massive amount of energy very, very quickly. So um, it links in really with fast twitch muscle fibers and the fact that it's, it's rapid, it's explosive. Uh, and it generally, this system only lasts up to about 10 seconds or so, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but up to those 10 seconds is primarily this system that's working in. Uh, explosive, um, over them 10 seconds, it doesn't need oxygen, so it's an anaerobic system. Um, and also, it, you know, linking back in with fast twitch muscle fibres again. Um, like I said, I've already mentioned it's explosive, it's going to be like your 10 second sprints. Uh, it's going to be like a, a one rep max or like strength sort of style training in the gym. Uh, and um, it doesn't actually give us... Uh, or it doesn't actually use any of our fuels, believe it or not. So the, the, the fuel in this system is the creatine phosphate itself. So no, no carbs, no fats, no proteins, uh, just the creatine phosphate that is used as a fuel. And as a result, you don't actually get any byproducts, uh, as it mentions here. And if you're not familiar, a byproduct is simply a waste product. It's a product that's not used in the process. Now in this case, as the phosphate leaves, what the creatine will do is it will pick up another phosphate and then the system will just keep regenerating. It's like a loop, basically. So, uh, really effective system, however, doesn't last very long. Um, after those 10 seconds, now the, in order to keep exercising and keep going, um, we have to then kick into the next system. So, we've got the lactate system. Now, the lactate system primarily now uses glucose as the fuel. Uh, and it can be used in two ways. Um, Obviously, the glucose or glycogen, which is stored glucose, um, is, is, is found in the bloodstream um, and it can be used either with oxygen or without. Now, with oxygen uh, is what we call slow glycolysis. So you see the word there, glycolysis. Uh, basically means it's, it's oxidative, uh, it's a little bit less intense, um, but we're still using glucose as the main fuel. 
Uh, now the most common use of the lactate system is through the anaerobic or the fast glycolysis as it's referred to. And essentially glycolysis is just um, the breakdown of, of glucose or glycogen uh, in order to be um, expelled into um, ATP. Um, and what happens when we don't use oxygen as we break down glucose is that um, it releases hydrogen ions uh, and then the hydrogen ions are then where we get our lactic acid from as well. Uh, and it's generally it's the hydrogen that's actually causes the burn in the muscle. So when you do an exercise, whether it be, let's say, a 200 or 400 meter run, it might be doing weights in the gym where you're going for the last few reps and the burn starts kicking in. That's a buildup of hydrogen, um, which is then causing lactic acid production within the muscles. That's where that burn initially comes from. Uh, now, that, the reason that burn comes is because um, your body can actually filter out the hydrogen and lactic acid up to a certain point. Now, when the exercise is too intense um, for the amount of lactic acid that you're producing, um, basically there's more lactic acid being produced than there is getting rid of. Um, and we call this um, OBLA, or onset of blood lactate accumulation. Uh, so blood lactate is rising and we're not getting rid of it quick enough. Uh, and there's a little chart, a few slides down the line to show um, where this stage kicks in. Um, and as, as you hit OBLA, that is what we tend to call our lactate threshold as well. So that's the point at which we can train up to a certain intensity uh, and then we have to slow down. So let's say you're doing weights, you know, the burn kicks in, it kicks in, it kicks in, and it gets to the point where you've got to stop or you've got to take the weight off. That is essentially where your lactate threshold is. Now by training this system, what you allow your body to do is cope with it better. So you can, uh, the more you get into that lactate threshold, the more you produce lactic acid, the better your body gets at dealing with it. So um, basically, um, you know, that's why you, you try to do the extra rep or that extra set when you're in the gym, you try and push the extra bit uh, each time that you might do the run, whatever it might be. Uh, and here's like a little bit of a breakdown of uh, what happens with the lactate system. So you've got glycogen or glucose, it's broken down, we get our ATP which is going to give us our energy uh, and as a result we get that lactate or that lactic acid. Now this lactic acid here is the byproduct of this system, so this is the waste product, we don't actually use the lactic acid. Um, now again, this, this system generally releases ATP very, very quickly, so it's still going to be working under high intensities, um, however, not as, not as high as the creatine phosphate system. So uh, if you think creatine phosphate system is like 100% max effort, uh, this is around the sort of 75 to 95% ranges. Uh, so there's a little bit of variation in it, depending on whether or not you're using oxygen. Um, and once, once you kind of get to that up to, let's say, two, three minute maximum that you could use this system for, any further past that, uh, you would then need to drop into the aerobic system. So you wouldn't be able to con continue such a high intensity. It has to, to drop the intensity a little bit. Um, going back to that table I was mentioning before, uh, this is kind of what the, the lactate threshold would look as a chart. So if you can see down the bottom, you've got your speed, um, and then you've got the amount of lactate in millimoles per litre uh, down the left-hand side of the chart there. Now, just a bit further down the chart, that's where your aerobic threshold would be. So that's where your body's able to use uh, oxygen um, for, for the intensity that you're working at. As the speed gets progressively higher, you can see here a change in the angle of the line. Uh, this part here is the lactate threshold or, or the anaerobic threshold. That's the point whereby your, your body is, is, is at a certain intensity that you're going to struggle uh, to keep up that pace for too much longer. Um, now, the second part of the curve is where you've got the obla kicking in. So that's where lactate starts to take a sharp rise. Um, and all this is doing here is increasing the amount of lactate and the acidity in the muscles to a point where the muscles are like on fire and you get that burning sensation and you kind of have to stop at this point to allow your body to filter the acid back out again. So that's kind of how it would look like on a, from a chart's perspective. Um, like I said, after that two or three minutes or so, you've got to drop the intensity a little bit. So we'll go now onto the aerobic system. Um, this generally is, you know, everyday activities 
throughout you know, our lives are going to be using the aerobic system. Right now, standing here, I'm using the aerobic system. It's not very intense, I'm doing a lot of talking, but generally um, it's pretty easy for me to maintain over a long period of time. So you're talking three minutes plus, um, lower intensities, uh, and naturally at this point we're going to have to need, use oxygen. So this is very much as it says in the title, aerobic. Yeah, it utilises fats as well as glucose or carbohydrates um, to, to provide us with, with our energy um, in the presence of oxygen, obviously, and, and it happens in the mitochondria. So I mentioned it a few units ago. Uh, the mitochondria is a cell within the, the muscle uh, and it's responsible for this, this oxidative process, which I'll explain on the next page. Uh, now, through this process, uh, the body expels byproducts. Um, going back to the respiratory system, we've got our carbon dioxide. So, as, as oxygen is used, carbon dioxide is made. We also get water uh, and heat as well as byproducts. So, water will generally just be dispersed back around the body, maybe sweated out, and again, the heat you know, is going to generate throughout. So, you can see here, I like to call the, the mitochondria like the body's little energy factory. So you think of the mitochondria as a factory. Now three things go in, three things go out essentially. So three things in, glucose, fatty acids and oxygen. And three things come out. We've got ATP, obviously meaning our, our energy source, carbon dioxide and water are the three main components that come out. So like for like swaps basically. Um, so like I say, it's lower intensities, uh, this, this process is much slower, uh, there's, there's lots of chemical reactions that take place in the mitochondria here so naturally it takes us a little bit longer to get that ATP, however it's much more sustainable once we've got it. And uh, if, you, if you think about exercises in particular, you, you've got a, an obvious example in let's say a marathon or it could be a, you know, a long distance event like you know, triathlons, um, any sort of you know low intensity, long duration exercises, anything above three minutes really, you would class it as an aerobic exercise. So um, you guys from home can have a go at thinking of some more examples that I've not covered for creating phosphate system, for the lactate system, and also for the aerobic system and see how many different exercises you can get. And maybe think about gym scenarios as well and, um, and think about what type of weights you might use for each different system. Um, and on that, uh, I'm going to leave you with some recap questions. Um, again, a nice quick fire topic there for you. Um, have a go at these questions. Only three questions to have an answer at. Uh, see how you get on. Any questions?